Hello, we meet again. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, after we discuss about the I square C serial communication on the PIC 16F 877 or 877A, uh, now our topics in uh, continuing to the serial communication using the SPI communication, which is uh, one of the serial communication features in the PIC 16F877 or 877A microcontrollers. So let's uh, begin our uh, explanation about this kind of features because the SPI serial communication is different from the I2C and also different from the USAC serial communication. So uh, what is the SPI? The SPI is stands for Serial Peripheral Interface Serial Peripheral Interface SPI Just right here, okay uh, And it was initially developed and proposed by Motorola for use in micro uh, their microprocessor and also their microcontroller <coughs> especially for the interface applications so uh, if I square C developed by Philips, uh, but SPI developed by Motorola. Uh, in a system that uses the SPI bus, one device acts as the master. Just like the I square C uh, protocol or, or I square C communication. One master and the other device as a slave. The master initiates communication and also provides clock posts to the slave devices. SPI is implemented in the PIC microcontroller by hardware module called the synchronous serial port or SSP or the master synchronous serial port or MSSP. This module is built into many different PIC microcontroller devices. It allows serial communications between two or more devices at high speed and reasonably easy to implement. The MSSP can operate either in I2C or SPI mode. So that master synchronous serial port is uh, the important module according to the I2C and also the SPI uh, communication protocol or serial communication protocol. So SPI is used for connecting peripherals to each other and microcontrollers just like I2C. Many devices support the SPI protocol and can easily communicate with microcontroller via SPI. For example, an ATC, an DAC and so on. The SD cards, the quick crystal display LCD, uh, which is LCD beside uh, using in I2C interface also uh, some LCD using SPI interface. Real-time clock, just like TS1306 that use uh, SPI interface, serial display drivers like uh, Max7290, serial APROM uh, just like 25LC256, it's uh, different from 2464 that uh, we've explained or we've discussed about it in the previous video lectures. So. Depending on the number of slave devices connected, the master will have one dedicated pins for the SS or CS line, chip select or SS line for each slave, slave select, yeah, chip select, CS or slave select or SS. So this is uh, the illustration about how to connect one master to three slaves, okay? Uh, one slave is according to the temperature sensors. The second slave is for the RTC or real time clock. And the last slave is for the SD card. So, uh, what is the same connection here? The, the same connection uh, between master and, and slaves is STL cap pin, STO pin, and STI pin. But this, this master or uh, some of the microcontroller have uh, more than uh, one SS. So for this example, the, the microcontroller have a three 
right here is s1 ss2 ss3 so it's enough for the three slaves the ss1 is connected to the temporal rotor sensor the, SS, the second ss or ss2 is connected to real time clock the ss3 is connected to the sd card so uh, if if the master want to communicate with the real time clock for example so the master have to activate uh, the ss2 line Okay, to activate uh, whether either active low or maybe active high. So the master should activate the SS line according to the real time clock module and so on. So this is a example of the SPI uh, interconnection. So the other uh, connection is just right here is more general because uh, this this master is has uh, is. Uh, for for SS and this is uh, all our all the the devices is slave slave one slave two slave three slave four and just you can see that uh, it's it's devices have uh, four lines one for the clock uh, the other two for the data to be transfer and to be received and the last one is uh, SS line so so this kind of connection uh, doesn't need uh, address just like I square C. Uh, they need only uh, SS line, but be careful that uh, if the master has only two SS, so you can only have uh, two slaves and so on. So for this, uh, the first example is three SS, so we have uh, three devices, and the second example is four SS lines. So what we have here is four uh, slime slave devices and so on so spe is usually called uh, four wire you, you uh, just to know that this is four wire uh, full duplex okay full du why, why full duplex because the, the receiving data and transmitting data have uh, separate lines it's different from the i square c because i square c is half duplex it's only uh, have uh, scl and sda the SDA, SDA, and the in the I square C is only to transmit or to receive the data. But in in the SPI connection, we have uh, two separate lines: one to transfer the data and one to receive the data. Okay, so they call that this is a four wire to duplex synchronous serial communication so the function of the four wires uh, just as follow just uh, i mentioned before the first is SCLK or serial clock this is the serial clock uh, and it is generated by the master not by the slave and controls when data is sent and also when it is read the SCK, SCLK pin of a master is connected to SCLK pin of a slave uh, the other is MOSI master out slave in or STO serial data output this pin carries data out of devices from master to slave the other is MISO master in slave out or SDI serial data in this pin carries data into a device from slave to master and the last one is uh, slave select or chip select SS or CS this pin allows master device to indicate to slave that a master wishes to start an SPI data exchange between the that slave device and NSF. So uh, you have to to know that for the signal SS signal or slave select or chip select must be used when more than one slave exists in a system, but can be optionally uh, can be optional. Okay, when you only have a one slave, one slave exists in the circuit. But I think it's always good to practice to always use it, whether uh, either uh, one slave, two slave, three slaves, and so on. Depending on the number of devices on the bus, we can have more than one chip select lines or one per device uh, in the bus. It, it depends on the microcontroller itself, whether they have uh, maybe two uh, SS or three SS and so on. So just take a look at your uh, microcontroller, uh, whether they have uh, two or more uh, 
SS or slave select according to the SPI. So this is uh, what is SPI. Uh, you can you can watch it uh, in the YouTube and also, but I can uh, just a minute. You can watch in this this link, okay? Yes, this is from the microchip. What is SPI? Hello and welcome again to Microchip's Memory Technology Series. So what's SPI? SPI is an acronym for Serial Peripheral Interface. Hardware folks will refer to the interface as SPI. Software okay, uh, folks will can, tend to say... You can watch it later in this, this link youtube.com slash watch blah 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 okay so i continue to to the next it's about the advantages of spi uh, just as you can see that the the first advantages of uh, spi is a full duplex communication not for the i square c i square c is still half duplex but spi is full duplex communication the second uh, the second advantage is faster than asynchronous serial and also faster than I square C, allowing large quantities of data to be transferred quickly. Okay, SPI can operate at uh, too high speed, but generally detected by the slowest device on the bus. So this this kind uh, not the advantages, but the disadvantages because uh, it's high speed, but generally detected by slowest device on the bus, just like I square C. Typically, the speed is one to one hundred megabits per second. Things. Third, the hardware protocol is simple to implement. The receiver hardware can be simple shift register. Transceivers are not needed. Slave uses the master clock and don't need precision oscillators. Fourth, it supports multiple slaves. Just uh, you, uh, just uh, you see in the previous slide, it supports multiple slaves. Uh, and then complete protocol flexibility for the bit transfer. This is not limited to 8 bit words and ability choice of message size, contain and propose. Okay. And then lower power requirement than I2C to, to less circuitry and no need for pull up resistor. So the SPI doesn't need the pull up resistor. Uh, it's, it's different from the I2C uh, uh, because the I2C should be using the pull up resistor. In their lines. So this is on the disadvantages of SPI. Uh, the first is require more signal lines. Okay, uh, the the SPI have a uh, four four lines: the clock, uh, two of lines to transfer and receive data, and the other is for GS line. So will require more wires than other serial communication, especially when many slaves are in. The master must control all communications, so slaves can talk directly to each other. SPI is designed for fairly short range, just like I2C, on the same PCP as the master or via relatively short cable compared to 232, 485 or CAN plus. So this is, uh, I think, uh, this one is the advantage of the SPI, it's like I2C too, and also uh, this last disadvantage is also disadvantage of I2C because I suggest that uh, you connect the SPA and the SPI device to the uh, master maybe uh, in the same PCP. Okay, so this is the example of the SPI sensors. For example, Max 31855 SPI for the thermocouple temperature sensors, this one. So just you can see is uh, have uh, GS, CLK, and so on. And this is for SCP-1000 pressure sensor. Uh, uh, they have a MISO, MOSI, SCK, okay, and CSP uh, according to the SPI. So this is uh, the example uh, from the microchip, which is PIC-88. Uh, 55 
16F88185. Just I have uh, also uh, this small tiny microcontroller, you know. This this part is the development port, and this part is for the the uploader of the program to the microcontroller itself. So the uh, the, the the uploader is using PIC ATF25, but the the operation of the microcontroller in the MPLF action uses uh, this kind of microcontroller. So as to just you can see, uh, what we have here is according to the uh, features of this kind of microcontroller. Uh, just you can see they have a uh, SPI, SCL, SDL, and also USAT, RX, TX, and also, oh sorry, uh, this is for I2C, this is for SPI, MOSI, MISO, SC, SCK, CS, okay, so uh, th this kind of can, can support an SPI. So this is the, the if we zoom, if we zoom it, the, the part of the PIC, 60F 188.55. Uh, you can see that uh, what we have here is uh, the SPI features here, right here in the left side, and the uh, right side is uh, what we have here is USART and also the I square C. So uh, from the developer, this one is called the micro bus. Okay, you can you can uh, just like Arduino seal, but this is a micro bus uh, support the all the three of the serial communication and also they can generate the PWM just uh, we discussed earlier and also interrupt and also we, what we have here is uh, the power source of according to 3.3 volt and also 5 volt and ground okay so the other is a uh, extended uh, pin okay so the other is a picker using two two micro buses here so you can connect uh, to to kind of uh, click oh, sorry uh, to kind of maybe sensor or attractor using this micro bus okay so this is the 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 examples according to the microcontroller which is I have uh, uh, SPI and also I square C and also use uh, serial communication capabilities okay uh, so, what we, ha we have here, because we use the Micro C Pro SPI Pass Library, so you need to know the, the library, okay? So, some of, like, you can, you can, you can read this, this note here, you can pause the, the video and uh, read this note, because uh, programming SPI Pass communication is not difficult, most of the compilers provide libraries routines which make it easy okay the SPI routines require you to specify the module you want to use because some microcontrollers have more than one SPI module okay for the first one the the SPI bus library is a uh, SPI right here SPI init and then SPI init advanced SPI read write set active and generic routine is SPI read and write so for those microcontrollers which have uh, multiple SPI modules, switching between the SPI modules and the SPI library is done by the SPI set active functions. Okay, I think, ah, okay, this is SPI set active functions. Some microcontrollers doesn't support SPI init advanced routine, so please refer to the appropriate data sheet. Certain SPI lens on some PIC16 and hence family MCUs can be routed through alternative pins. So this is uh, the library routines according to SPI to, uh, for, uh, to, uh, from Micro C compiler. So this is the example all the sensors uh, used for the IMU in a cell module 3 access acceleration using SPI. It's only 3 access. Okay, 3 access uh, is about 9 degree of freedom. Okay, so you can you can read the sensor from the the interface the SPI interface right here using the SCL SDA cron uh, also you can use the I think this is for the yeah SDA and SCO okay and this is for clock and also for uh, 
and the CS, chip select itself. So the first one is SPI init. This routine configures and enable SPI modules with the following setting, uh, the master mode, the clock, which is uh, divided by four, clock idle state low, data transmitted on low to high edge, and also input data sample at the middle of interval. So example is SPI1 in it, just like that. So the other is SPI1, um, maybe SPI1 in it advanced. Uh, in it to be called before OSIN other function of uh, SPI library. So this example, the set the SPI module to master mode. Okay, the clock is divided by four. Data sample at the middle of in the interval using this SPI data sample middle, and the SPI oscillator is divided by by four. Okay, and data transmit at low to high. Yeah, SPI clock it low. SPI low to high. Okay, this is you can you can use this this uh, this kind of the constant, but be careful. Be, uh, you have to read the manual of this kind of functions because uh, you cannot enter uh, your definition itself. Yeah. Okay, you you have to follow the rules, uh, which is uh, some of which is you can you can read it, the help of the li this library and the micro c uh, program software micro c software so th then we have a uh, spi read so this is spi1 or spi2 to read the, the byte from the spi bytes. the parameters is buffer this is dummy data for clock generation this right here okay uh, for typically short yeah short take equal to spi1 read buffer that's it so so easy and then write SPI one write write bytes via the SPI bus. Uh, SPI must be initialized and communication established before using this function. So the other is uh, set the active SPI modules, which will be used by the SPI routines. Parameter the, the parameters as only two read pointer and write pointer, just like this SPI to read, SPI to write, and the generic. One is SPI read and the other is SPI write. Like uh, the the previous SPI one or SPI two read, SPI one or SPI two write. Okay, so if you want to to make your library for SPI, for example for SPI channel one, uh, I give you some of the function according to the initialized master, initialized slave uh, to write to read. The, the data okay so this one to initialize the master uh, the three say is zero because one uh, because the spi is according to the proxy ssp step you can you can write it uh, you can read it in 74 bit 74 of the data sheet itself ssp con one is according to this three say is no three say three is zero set as output for slave model so this is initialized slave, uh, SPI1 initialized slave. So the 3C, 3C5, and 3C3 is according to that kind. I think it's also, also the, slave, uh, the same for the master and the slave. But the 3C is set as in out for master mode. Or uh, sorry, for uh, I think output for master mode, this is for slave mode. So this is to write as SP buff uh, equal to incoming, and this is to read while not PC return the SSP buff. So always the data to be transmitted and data to be received is uh, using uh, via SSP buff. Okay, so this is uh, ready ready to read if SSP step uh, and 001 return one is also true. So it's ready to read the data is ready to read. So this is an example how to access the from 887 to MCP 4921 and also for uh, this is for the the MCP 5041. So this is the init main 3A, 3A0, 3A1, also 1, and the RA0. As input, RA1 as input. 
chip select is 1, deselect DAC, chip select, oh sorry, the DAC is active low, okay, uh, just like here, so you can see that the CS is uh, inverse, CS, naked, so the CS itself is active low, not active high, so if we, uh, if you use the logic one here to chip select, so it means deselect DAC, chip select direction is 0. So the TS pin uh, is configured as an output. So the SPL wind and it initializes the SPL motor. So the this is the TAC output. Chip select as zero. Select the TAC. Tim S value TAC. Uh, save eight bit and with zero F store value. Okay. So define the SSA setting. See M MCP forty nine twenty one data set. And SPI one write so this is write the high the high pipe so this is uh, write the low pipe and then you you have to deselect the TSAC okay the this is a point main and so sorry uh, this is one if R S zero button is pressed increment value if R A one button is pressed decrement value okay the TSA output is according to the value and I think the SA output is right here. I'll send to the SPI. Okay. If so, if you press the RA0 button, the increment value, but the TSA output is according to the value. So this is the TAC. Okay, store value TAC, just like this, okay, TAC connector, and this is to, to write the temperature, okay, digital to analog, uh, so you have to, from here, to the MCP TAC, and you can uh, use TAC, uh, to measure the TAC voltage, you have uh, to use a uh, multimeter. So this this kind, if you uh, press the button, the voltage is increasing, and if you press the RA one button, the voltage will be decreasing, and so on. Okay, so this is the the simple uh, example according to the SPI. Serial communication using the PIC microcontroller and also use the TAC interface, which is MCP4921. Okay, that's the for SPI. Thank you for your attention. If you have any comments, if you have any questions, please uh, don't hesitate to, to write uh, at this below comment. Thank you very much. Uh, see you for the last slide of this PIC. 60 and F877 microcontrollers lectures. Like